Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about making and selling candles, which is kind of ironic for this video because I am making room sprays. So for today's video, I'm just going to be briefly going over how I make my room sprays and then we can get into more of the topic of discussion for today's video. So right here, I'm just using some distilled water and I think it's funny how it says zero calories because do people actually drink distilled water? I've never heard of people actually drinking it. I just hear it being used for all different kinds of purposes. But I'm making five room sprays at a time. So this is now poly 20. So what this does is this just binds the oil and the water together. So the fragrance oil and the water so that it is not separated and it can have, you know, a better scent throw and that it's not going to be all separated. So in the beginning, I used those little measuring cups in the back for everything to measure it out with, but now I typically just use those for fragrance oils. So fragrance oils when making my room sprays as well as fragrance oils for my candles. Um, I just found that pouring the poly 20 and also the preservative directly into this little pitcher made it a lot easier for me because I found that because those consistencies are so thick, they were actually just getting caught at the bottom of those little silicone measuring cups. So I just decided it was easier to pour it directly in there. Um, I did find later in the video that I accidentally poured a few grams extra of the poly 20. Um, so I kind of had to, you know, slow down a little bit more to make sure that I wasn't you know, pouring too much out. Um, funny enough, I did actually buy those little pipettes. Um, I don't know why I wasn't using it more in this video. I do use it more later on because as you can see, it's spilling all over the bottles. So Erica, why didn't you use that? It's literally right there beside you. Um, I just was thinking, oh, it's going to be so much faster. It's going to be so much easier to just pour it directly in there and not use these little pipettes. But um, I did use it a little bit more later on. And you can see that those are a close-up of these cute little silicone um, measuring cups that I got. And uh, today's video, I am making Saturday morning cartoons, which is what this is. So this is Saturday morning cartoons, uh, which is the Fruit Loops fragrance oil from the Flaming Candle. That's alliteration. Um, and as you can see, I like to just use these little cups and measure it out. I do about an ounce of fragrance oil per five bottles of the room sprays. So that's a really good amount to use to be able to get five separate bottles, um, considering I pretty much use, I don't use an ounce, I use less than an ounce, but it feels like I use an ounce per candle, but I don't, I use less than that. Um, but it just seems like I can make so many more room sprays with so much less fragrance oil because it's only at 5%. Um, so I'm just blending everything together, stirring it up, and it does have a milky, consistency. So as you can see right there, it is milky. Um, I believe that Jessica from Hawthorne Company, she I think has been able to figure out how to get a clear perfume or clear room spray um, base. Um, I'll try to find her video and link it here for you guys if you want to check it out. If you have clear bottles and you don't want it to be milky, I think that she figured out a way to make it clear. But honestly, since I use these matte black jars, I don't really worry about the color of it um, or the opaqueness of it just because you can't see it. So um, of course, I'm just using something to hide those features about it. Um, but so far, I've had a lot of people messaging me and asking me, you know, how is the lingering effect of this formula? Um, and to be completely honest, you guys, this is still pretty new to me on making these. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, oh, I got a sale. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's not necessarily something that I know how to uh, how to gauge, how to gauge the scent throw up, the, the lingering effect to it. Um, the only thing that I can compare it to was I actually purchased the base from Virginia Candle Supply and I noticed that there was a lot more separation between the fragrance oil and the base. Um, it wasn't as combined as it is um, with this base that I'm creating on my own. Um, and also it is a little bit more expensive to purchase the, the pre-made bases. Um, I also had somebody suggest to me 
can I just pre-make this base and then add the fragrance oil like you would if you were to make a pre-made, if you were to purchase a pre-made base, can I just make this in batches ahead of time? And honestly, that's probably a really good idea. Um, I should definitely look into doing that just like I should look into pre-making my blends of my fragrance oils that I have. So instead of sitting there and having to blend these two all the time, I should just purchase bottles and then just blend them together and have them for when I need them. I feel like that is just a way better idea. Um, but when it comes to making these, I I like the way that my room sprays last. Um, I use them all the time actually in my bathroom. Um, so I actually really, really like them. Um, so I would actually purchase these. So that kind of tells me that, okay, maybe it is a good room spray. So again, I don't know. It's just kind of impossible for me to try to gauge, you know, the strength of it. And I'm sure that, you know, us as candle makers, we kind of feel the same way when it comes to uh, burning candles and trying to really gauge that hot throw on the candles. It just seems like it's almost impossible um, because you can only compare to what you're perceiving it as. So I think that that's kind of, you know, something that's really hard to um, specifically say, but the best thing that I can say is that I would purchase these myself. So I guess that's a good thing. But anyways, getting into the topic that I wanted to discuss in today's video as you watch me finish up making all of these room sprays. Um, and by the way, guys, I will have everything listed in the description box below of everything that I use to make my room sprays. Oh, I knocked over all of my little pipettes. Um, so I'll link that in the description box below. But the main thing that I wanted to talk about in today's video is just kind of a lot of balance, mental health, kind of the struggles that you go through as an entrepreneur. I know I've made a few videos like this before in the past, but I do feel like it's really, really important to talk about. And I was actually watching Sandy's video from Love You Candle Co. And she was discussing how she took a break for a few weeks from social media to kind of just I don't know, give her mental health a break. And she goes through anxiety. I go through anxiety. We have talked before through DMs, just kind of, you know, discussing that. And she is just, oh my gosh, she is the sweetest. She is so, so nice. And her video kind of inspired me because I was sitting here, you know, I have all this footage and I'm just trying to decide what I wanted to talk about in today's video. And I really think that it's so important to really focus on our mental health more than anything. I mean, mental health, physical health, um, all those things come before anything in life. And I feel like sometimes we always forget that because we're go, go, go. We're trying to get everything figured out, especially if you guys are working a full-time job and you're also trying to do this on the side. Just make sure that you really take some time for yourself because otherwise you are going to get so burnt out on everything and it can really, really affect you and start eating away at you the more that you start to put more and more pressure on yourself. And to be honest, guys, I tell you guys this all the time that I sometimes feel like I don't know what I'm doing um, when it comes to organizing my life. Um, and also because I've been sharing my journey here on YouTube from the very beginning, I do feel immense pressure. Um, but I also feel like I just put that on myself, you know, and I always hate bringing this up because I never want you guys to feel like I'm, you know, I hate what I'm doing. That is not at all. You guys know that I freaking love what I do, but there's so much pressure that comes with everything that I do. And I don't know if it's internal pressure or external pressure pressure and I have a feeling that it's more internal than external and it's hard to fight off. It's hard to fight off those feelings of I need to be doing more. I need to be posting more. I need to be, you know, answering more questions. I need to be, you know, more engaged, more involved. And that comes with being on social media a lot. And I definitely more recently have been feeling a lot better. And I know I talked about this in my last video where I did a QA. and a um, I've been feeling a lot better about the balance I have in life um, and the ways that I know how to de-stress and make myself feel better when I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed. And for the longest time, I have been really trying to figure out 
how to have the best work-life balance. And for those of you that are also working from home, um, you guys understand that when you're around your work all the time, when you see it constantly, it's all you think about, it's all you do. Um, And also you can feel um, like really, I keep on using the word immensely, but I guess that's the word of the day. Um, But you can feel really, really guilty if you aren't working on it. And I think that's the biggest thing. I, just like what Sandy said in her video, I'm an empath. I, I've known that uh, for quite a few years now when I first figured out what it was. Um, but I feel everything. I feel, you know, everybody else's struggles. I can't see, see anything on the news. I can't watch scary movies. I can't, like everybody who's into like serial killer documentaries, that would literally haunt me every day. I couldn't do it. I can't surround myself with that. I try to surround myself with positive things because, you know, as much as the world is not always positive, I just know myself that I would be so overwhelmed I could not function. Like, I I can't do it. So I know that with that comes a lot of guilt um, and a lot of putting a lot of pressure on yourself, feeling like uh, you need to be able to do everything and handle everything. And uh, yeah, it can be a lot sometimes. Um, And honestly, you guys, you guys are so kind to me. Like you guys are so sweet. And I wish that I could respond to all of your messages and just tell you how much I appreciate all of you guys and everything that you guys send to me. And especially, you know, on my videos, on my comments, and also whenever I write anything on my Instagram that I'm just open and honest with you guys about how I'm feeling. And you guys are so kind to me. Uh, sorry, I just had to take a moment. I get so emotional. Um, I need to just not do that <laughs> while I'm filming um, or I guess voice recording. But um, yeah, I just I always like to just kind of go back to I'm extremely grateful for where I am in life. Um, even if things come up that I am hard on myself about or I feel like maybe my candles aren't performing the best or I get negative feedback sent to me or something happens or, you know, things like that. I have a lot of pressure on me. Um, And I don't know if that's, again, external or or internal, but I do think it's mostly internal. Um, And I have to be self-aware enough to realize that. So um, I actually just asked you guys over on Instagram about work-life balance. And I thought it was interesting some of the responses that I've gotten because I know that not even with entrepreneurship, but just everything in general, work-life balance is a huge struggle for a lot of people in life. And I feel like the biggest things that I have um, really done lately that's helped me a lot are my boyfriend will text me that he's on his way home around, it's between five and six that he lets me know that. And that's the time of my day where I stop what I'm doing with work and I clean up, I do the dishes, I start preparing dinner. Um, I don't think he realizes how much energy that gives me when he texts me that he's on his way home because I know that I have an hour until he gets home and I've been prioritizing so many different things for my work throughout the day and I know that that's the time of the day where I really need to just focus on Um, cleaning up and if I need to take a shower because I haven't taken a shower that day or if I need to start prepping dinner, all of those things have really helped me with realizing that it's time to start focusing on you know, home life. It's, it's time to start focusing on that. So it really has been kind of, you know, right when I get up in the morning, I typically start working between eight and nine, sometimes a little bit earlier, depending on the day. And I stop at around, you know, between five and six. So I, I actually just started realizing that I'm doing that more. Um, and then my boyfriend and I will eat dinner and we'll watch a show and then I'll go to bed. I'll, I typically don't anymore um, do any work stuff at night and that has been helping me so much. I used to just constantly focus on that at night and just overload myself. You know, I would be working at night and then the second I'd wake up in the morning, I'd continue working and it would be an all day experience. I would be working throughout dinner and I just didn't want to do that anymore. So um, that has helped me a lot. Um, Somebody on the replies, they had actually said, make sure you take one full day off. So she said, Um, This is Victoria A. Plummer. She said, 
Um, take at least one full day off and have work hours. No working after 6 p.m. for me. And that's kind of the same for me, honestly. Um, it definitely depends on the day. Sometimes I will do a few things depending on what it is. But for the most part, um, that's really kind of been my schedule. Somebody else said, um, I don't. I'm new to this and have become somewhat anxious. I totally feel you on that. Um, it can be really... Uh, it can be a lot. Trying to figure it all out on your own, it can be really overwhelming. Just know that everybody else feels the exact same way. Nobody goes in to start a business and they know exactly what they're doing. It's It takes a long time to figure it out. I have been doing this. Um, it's almost been a year since I've quit my job. And it's actually been over a year now since I've actually been able to stay home due to the pandemic, uh, you know, in the middle of March last year, but I've been doing this for a year and I still am figuring it out. But slowly but surely, I am doing much better than I was a year ago. So, so much better. Um, somebody else said, haven't found my balance. It definitely takes time. I'm still finding it too. Um, somebody said, by listening to my body, for example, if it needs to sit down, I let it. Yes. Um, I find myself, if I'm standing too much, I just tell myself, you know what? I need to lay down right now because I have been on my feet for way too long. Um, somebody said, taking time for yourself, you definitely need time away from your craft to get perspective. Um, that's very true too. You know, if I'm overloading myself on things, I will kind of pull myself back and realize that I need to um, take a break from it. And then when you come back to it, it can be more enjoyable sometimes. If you feel like you're overloading yourself on it, it can be really, you know, really intense. Um, and then Tara Simply, which is Diana, she said, I prioritize my weekends off and strict daily work schedules. This is typically 10 to 7 for me. That, I love that so much. She, and I know she's probably going to be like, oh my gosh, no, but she seems like she has it all together. And if, if you guys view me that way and I'm viewing... So the way that I view her is that, oh my gosh, she has everything got put together. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's got it down. And then she's probably thinking like, no girl, <laughs> I struggle too. And that's exactly how I feel too. You know, the way we perceive things on social media is so interesting. Um, and this is why I think it's important for me to talk about these things and and share little things. Like the other day I, I put on my story that I accidentally almost shipped out a candle that was a tester candle that I had already lit and I was you know luckily I check all of my candles before I ship them out but yeah that it was one of those moments where I'm like I have to share this with everybody because I know that people do a lot of things we make a lot of mistakes but not everybody shares them so that's really what I like to include on my channel and include on my journey you know with with what I'm doing with my business and I think that it's so important to be able to share those things because again on social media we see everybody's highlights we see everybody's um, best parts of their life and their day and all of that and um, it's not to say that that's a bad thing because we like to see things where other people are happy or, or other people are doing well. At least, like, I really like to see that. Um, so I get why people like to share that part of their life. But when it comes to business and entrepreneurship and everything that goes into it, I will continue making videos like this. I will continue to make videos on mental health, finding balance, and everything that goes into that because I feel like that is something that's so, so important and we all really need to take the time to to figure that out and allow ourselves that time to figure it out because it can be really, really hard. And I think the thing that I didn't know from the beginning that I constantly will try to tell people, you know, in my DMs or comments or people that I'm close to talking with is that nobody has it all put together. Everybody starting a business is learning. And I think the craziest thing with life is that we don't realize that everybody's experience is just as real as our own. So every thought, every feeling, everything that you're going through is what everybody else is experiencing too. But most of the time people aren't expressing those things because it's harder to talk about the things that you're struggling with and it's easier to talk about your accomplishments and your goals and all those things. So 
Um, this video is about to be ending um, all these clips. I'm about to um, be done labeling all of these. So I really, really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love talking with you guys. Please let me know in the comment section below how you guys find balance. Let me know, do you work full time? Do you have another job? Is, you know, candle making your full time job or do you have another, you know, side income? Let me know. Um, but with that, you guys go follow me on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.